Hi everyone, my name is Janice and I'm currently pursuing my Master's of Health Informatics at the University of Toronto and this summer I had the opportunity to work on the health implementation team at Vector and I'm super excited to be here today to be talking about one of the projects I've been working on which is FL for Health. <laughs> Sorry. But first, I want to acknowledge my Vector colleagues who have shaped this incredible project way before I even began. So my presentation will cover implementation of a novel tool in the healthcare sector and how we're driving user adoption. But first, I'll provide context on the current landscape and why this tool was even created. So we know that deep learning models require large amounts of data to perform well. But in healthcare, data ownership is highly protected. So the implication is poorly trained models may result in poor model outcomes, which is detrimental to our patients. So one of the solutions is to leverage federated learning, which enables us to jointly train machine learning models on data in different locations, effectively allowing us to maintain data privacy and even at times achieve better per model performance to centralize training approaches. So on a high level, federated learning is a technique that allows organizations, which we refer to as clients, in different geographical locations to be training, collaboratively training their machine learning models without sharing their raw data. And they do this by sharing the results of the trained models in the form of model parameters, and the model continues to improve iteratively from a central server. So in theory, federated learning can transcend the way we train machine learning models, but in practice, performing FL experiments can be a very complex process. Which is what brings me to FL for Health. Um, it is an open source library of state-of-the-art federated learning techniques, um, which aims to streamline the experimentation, development, and deployment of FL training for health projects. So this was created by AI Eng, and they're built on the foundational components of Flower, which is a federated learning framework that another organization created. Um, but FL for Health extends the functionality of Flower. The ultimate vision is to make it easy for hospitals to collaborate and train ML models with data sets across multiple organizations, leading to stronger models that have more diverse patient data sets and eventually better disease diagnosis, treatment, and prevention to name a few. So with a full team and limited resources, how can we effectively drive adoption of FL for Health? While the technology is very promising, we need to focus on how we set ourselves up for success and drive up user adoption. Without users, our research wouldn't be translated properly and efficiently, meaning that we would waste time, effort, and have no way to improve our product. So we can do this in two ways. First, becoming user ready, and second, achieving user buy-in. So starting with becoming user ready, we first need to identify our user group. So here on the slide, there's a clear criteria for potential collaborators using FL for Health. This was put together through identifying essential prerequisites across general, model, data, and infrastructural dimensions. And by collaborating with our cross-functional teams, I identified key requirements to the product's use and aligned them with our team's capabilities. Um, this streamlines the onboarding of partners and saves us time and resources compared to a trial and error approach. To achieve true user readiness, we must also understand our target's user pain points and how the platform can address them. So we mapped out the FL platform pipeline and identified key stakeholders for a clinical project. And these stakeholders include AI researchers, developers, and also clinician scientists. So from previous collaborations, we also drew parallels on what processes our users would want, such as a clinician wanting input on the clinical need and the priority of the project, the developer wanting to integrate the library with their infrastructure, and also the AI researchers wanting to optimize their model um, performance and training processes. So this deep dive into user workflows allowed us to understand um, how the platform would serve them better and improve the end-to-end -end process of training models. So once user readiness is established, securing buy-in is crucial. This involves gaining support from both the external product team implementing the project and also upper management who dictate budget and also organizational priorities. So buy-in is essential at two conceptual levels. First, understanding the underlying technology, which is FL, and the value proposition of our product, which is FL for Health. So in other terms, we need to convince people of smartphones before we convince them to buy the iPhone 15. 
So for us to secure buy-in, a key aspect is conveying how federated learning is superior to centralized training methods. Um, in literature reviews and reports from industry giants like NVIDIA and Google, they've discussed shortcomings of centralized approaches, such as the lack of collaboration adaptability, data set diversity, and data privacy in the healthcare setting. So the black bubbles elaborate further on the current landscape of these issues. Whereas federated learning offers advantages in three key areas. First, it is shown to enhance model performance by, through leveraging larger and diverse data sets from different clients. Second, it prioritizes data privacy by keeping patient health information within the organization. And it also leverages privacy enhancing technology to safeguard data. Finally, FL also allows for continuous model improvement, as I mentioned previously, through iterative updates based on new data added to, from participating sites. So this keeps the process of model improvement fast and it reduces administrative barriers. So all these um, benefits put patients first and ensures that their safety is prioritized when having ML weigh in on their health outcomes to some capacity, which is inherently nerve wracking. So once buy-in for FL is established, we focus on promoting our value proposition and differentiation of our product. So FL for Health uniquely empowers clinical institutions to conduct true FL training and evaluation. This library incorporates, as I mentioned, state-of-the-art federated learning personalized techniques, which sets us apart from many of our other competitors in North America um, that we've investigated through an environmental scan. We also use privacy enhancing technology, as I mentioned, and train models with two types of FL training, horizontal and cross silo. So this platform encapsulates the end-to-end -end processes and advantages of FL and serves as a good platform for federated learning and healthcare. Lastly, overcoming skepticism is crucial for securing buy-in. So through addressing key concepts um, and concerns raised by stakeholders and skeptics we've come across, we've built a very strong evidence base and proof points, demonstrating the superiority of federated learning over traditional uh, methods. And through overcoming this, we can build trust and credibility to our users and also shows that we have thought through their concerns. We've since successfully collaborated and are still collaborating with multiple large organizations and principal investigators on health projects such as the Gemini Consortium on Mortality and Delirium Prediction, and more recently looking at prostate cancer detection and segmentation with Dr. Hyder's lab at Mount Sinai. Um, collaborating, our collaborators are testing our platform by training their own ML models, and we are building out our processes alongside them. So we hope to continue expanding our collaborations in tandem, and we are open to finding new users as well. So some next steps for this project include first convincing senior leadership um, for a very or various organizations to adopt our wonderful product um, into their organizations. Also consolidating use cases into manuscripts to further research and publications for growth in this area. And continuing to refine and build out our library for future clients and partners. I personally gained a deeper learning of technical intricacies of FL and have enjoyed exploring you know, different organizations and what they do with this technology, which is really cool. And I also recognize how important it is to convince stakeholders of such a technical and novel concept. Um, and it's a process that takes a lot of time and trust. And Vector's mandate is about translating research into real world applications. And FL for Health is a perfect example of that. So as we continue to develop this platform with new tools, we'll have to continue to keep up with the implementation, as I mentioned, to ensure these products get into the right hands, to the right users, and make the right difference to the patients. So thank you so much for listening. If you're interested in learning more, please check out our GitHub, and you can reach out to us. Um, any questions? do you find to be the hardest part of um, this project? Yeah, um, I don't have the most technical background, so I think translating a lot of the technical requirements from a very technical project was a lot to wrap around my head. So um, it was really helpful to talk to AI Engine. They were explaining a lot of the concepts to me in layman terms, and I was able to create the criteria as I showed um, because of that. And I think that's, that's, yeah, every player is important in 
building out a product. So I, I like to think that translating technical language is also, um, yeah, it was, is the best part. Okay, thanks so much.